Well, hello from the Giants Causeway in the north coast of Northern Ireland, where we have some incredible breaking news for you. Unconfirmed reports that the giant Finn McCool has gone into winter hibernation. There was the unmistakable sound of snoring coming from within the mountain. Through the winter time, of course, he's hibernating. Sure, don't all mythological creatures hibernate through the winter? Did ancient giants once roam the rugged coasts of Northern Ireland, meticulously constructing what we now admire as the Giant's Causeway? This stunning formation, comprising thousands of interlocking basalt columns, captivates with its geometric perfection and mystifying origins. They're fi finding these giant geometrical earthworks and evidence of very large populations. While scientific explorations attribute these awe-inspiring structures to volcanic activities, Local legends and ancient tales suggest otherwise, hinting at colossal figures sculpting this landscape. I have heard more stories about giants, and I have found that there is support for this. As we delve deeper, parallels with other enigmatic megalithic sites, such as the colossal Baalbek stones, stir the imagination. This is called the Trilithon. Each of these three blocks weighs 900 tons. Could there be a grain of truth to these myths? Join us as we explore the blurred lines between myth and geology at the Giant's Causeway, a place where history and folklore dance delicately on the edges of reality. Nestled on the rugged northeast coast of Northern Ireland in County Antrim, the Giant's Causeway is a breathtaking natural wonder, celebrated not only for its geological uniqueness, but also for its deep roots in local mythology. This is biology. The size of these creatures just is it's staggering. Formed from a volcanic fissure eruption some 50 to 60 million years ago, during the Paleocene epoch, the causeway consists of roughly 40,000 interlocking basalt columns. These columns are predominantly hexagonal, although there is a fascinating variety in their shapes, with some exhibiting four, five, seven, or even eight sides. This variety adds a unique character to the causeway's overall appearance, making it a subject of interest not only for tourists, but also for geologists and nature enthusiasts. The allure of the giant's causeway is magnified by the legendary tales of Finn McCool, or Fionn McCum Hale, a giant renowned for his strength and wisdom, who is said to have called the Antrim coast his home. According to Gaelic mythology, Finn was once challenged by the Scottish giant Benandonna. Rather than shrink from this daunting adversary, Finn constructed the causeway across the North Channel as a means to meet his foe without the peril of the sea. Finn started throwing boulders into the sea, creating a rocky bridge where Ben and Donna resided. This act of engineering is depicted as a monumental feat, showcasing Finn's resourcefulness and might. The tales take a humorous turn when Finn, realizing Ben and Donna's imposing size, relies on his wife Una's cunning to save him. She disguises Finn as a baby, and when Ben and Donna sees the size of the infant, he flees in terror, destroying the causeway behind him to prevent pursuit. If that was the size of the baby, just how huge was the father? This clever twist not only highlights the wit often celebrated in Irish folklore, but also underlines the cultural significance of storytelling in understanding and preserving history. Drawing an interesting parallel, the causeway shares thematic elements with Norse mythology's Bifrost, the burning rainbow bridge that connects Midgard, the realm of humanity, to Asgard, the home of the gods. Both structures, whether connecting lands or realms, symbolize significant passageways in their respective mythologies, embodying themes of challenge and transition. Today, the Giant's Causeway stands as a major tourist destination, attracting visitors from around the world who seek to immerse themselves in its natural beauty and legendary tales. It plays a pivotal role in the cultural heritage of Northern Ireland, embodying a blend of humor, bravery and cleverness, key traits cherished in Irish folklore. The enduring popularity of these legends ensures that the mythical and natural heritage of the Giant's Causeway continues to inspire awe and pride, bridging the gap between the past and the present. The Giant's Causeway, steeped in local myth, gradually made its mark on the broader European consciousness of natural wonders thanks to Sir Richard Bulkley's pivotal 1692 presentation to the Royal Society. This presentation marked the inception of the scientific exploration that would span centuries, exploring the intriguing natural formation on the northeast coast of Northern Ireland. 
Sir Richard Bulkley, a member of the prestigious Royal Society and a fellow at Trinity College Dublin, played a crucial role in introducing the Giant's Causeway to the scientific community. Though the specifics of his presentation are not well documented, his mention of the causeway was clearly intended to spark curiosity and scientific investigation. This early academic nod was instrumental, paving the way for the causeway to be studied under the emerging scientific methodologies of the Enlightenment, attracting the attention of geologists and natural philosophers. I want to know what else is going to be found that hasn't been investigated yet at all. We're just touching the edge of a huge mystery. The 18th century saw a burgeoning scientific interest in the natural world, with the giant's causeway becoming a focal point of study. The unusual basaltic columns drew scientists, prompted by Bulkley's mention, to theorize about their origins. This period was marked by significant debates, notably between Neptunism and Plutonism. Neptunism posited that the rocks had formed from minerals crystallizing in the oceans, suggesting that the causeway's columns were sedimentary deposits. In contrast, Plutonism argued these structures were the result of volcanic activity, where molten basalt cooled and contracted to form the hexagonal columns. Championed by James Hutton in the late 18th century, Plutonism eventually won out and is now the accepted explanation for the formation of the Giant's Causeway. Turning our gaze to a similar marvel, Fingal's Cave on the Scottish island of Staffa offers a compelling parallel to the Giant's Causeway. Both are characterized by strikingly similar hexagonal basalt formations, and both are steeped in connected folklore. Fingal's Cave is said to be named after the same giant linked to the causeway. This shared geology and lore have spurred theories of a possible geological bridge once connecting Ireland and Scotland, highlighting not only the shared natural wonders, but also the rich cultural ties between the two regions through their legends. This comparison deepens our appreciation of how geological formations can weave together the fabric of myths across lands. Fingal's Cave on the uninhabited island of Staffa is a place where geological wonder meets literary inspiration. Its discovery by the modern world came in 1772 when Sir Joseph Banks, already famed for his voyage with Captain James Cook, explored the cave. During his tour of Scotland, he was struck by the natural architecture of the cave. Banks's vivid descriptions in his letters and journals captivated the British public and intellectuals alike, spreading its fame far and wide. His portrayal helped cement the cave's status as a natural wonder, drawing artists, writers and eventually tourists, especially during the popular Grand Tour period in Europe. The name Fingal's Cave owes its origin to James Macpherson's literary work, which claimed to translate ancient Gaelic poetry, although it was later debated and considered largely his own creation. Nonetheless, the popularity of these poems romanticized Scottish history and added a mythical quality to the cave, linking it with the hero Fingal. This association not only named the cave, but also framed it within a narrative of heroic deeds and a mystic past, reinforcing it as a symbol of Scottish pride and identity. The cave itself is a geological marvel, formed through the cooling and solidification of lava. This process starts when a large lava flow cools uniformly, causing it to contract and fracture into long symmetrical columns, mostly hexagonal in cross-section. This phenomenon is not only rare, but also visually stunning, contributing significantly to the cave's fame. Inside, the cave's structure is grand and cathedral-like, standing about 72 feet high and stretching around 270 feet back into the cliffs. The roof arches naturally and the floor, partially submerged, is constantly washed by seawater, enhancing the cave's eerie and mystical sounds. Moreover, Fingal's cave is renowned for its extraordinary acoustics. The structure of the cave combined with the rhythmic sounds of the ocean creates a haunting soundscape that echoes against the basalt columns. This auditory feature significantly influences the cave's allure and has inspired numerous artists, playing a crucial role in the cave's artistic legacy. Through its natural beauty and the echoes of its columns, Fingal's Cave continues to be a source of fascination and inspiration, weaving together the strands of nature, myth and art.